Hello guys and gals, and this is part 22 of our reading of, well, part, uh, part 22A of our reading of Leaves of Gold. This chapter is 17 pages long, I think, so I have decided to split it up into two. So this is going to be part 22A, and then, yeah. I guess that that will work. It's going to be confusing, though. But anyways, I want to kind of keep the um, the parts consistent with the chapters. So this is going to be pages 117 to 125. But now, first of all, we're going to go over what Leaves of Gold actually is. And um, let me find it in the book here. Um, sorry. Leaves of Gold is an anthology of prayers, memorable phrases, inspirational verse, and prose from the best authors of the world, both ancient and modern, edited by Clyde Francis Lytell. Now, anyways, and we're going to go over the copyright information, which should be on your screen currently. It, this is a revised edition, 12th printing, 1964. Copyright 1938 by Evan S. Coslett. Revised 1948 by Donald G. Remley. Copyright 1948 by A.C. and D.G. Remley. And uh, it was published by the Coslet Publishing Company out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Printed in the United States of America. And we have a section to do on others. And as I said, this is going to be divided into two parts because it would probably be two or three hours if I read, if, um, I read it uncontested or, you know, uninterrupted. So, influence. Alice Freeman Palmer, the second president of Wesley College, was happiest when she was doing most for others. When she left the college, she gave herself to, uh, gave herself so unwearingly to her self-imposed task of lightening the burdens of the unfortunate that her husband, a Harvard professor, expostulated. He th he thought she should give her time and strength to writing books that would make her still more famous. You are building no monument, he said. When you are gone, people will ask who you are, and no one will be able to say, well, why should they, was the answer. I'm trying to make girls happier and wiser. Books don't help much towards that. It is people that count. You want to put yourself into people. They they touch other people, these others still, and so you go on working forever. That is by John T. Ferris. The Torchbearer. The hero is one who kindles a great light in the world, who sets up blazing torches in the dark sheets, the dark streets, sorry, of life for men to see, to see by. The saint is the man who walks through the dark path of the world himself a light. That is by Felix Adler. The Speech of Angels. Music is well said to be the speech of angels. In fact, nothing among the utterances allowed to man is felt to be so divine. It brings us near to the infinite. We look for moments across the cloudy elements into the eternal light. When song leads, oh no, yeah, when song leads and inspires us. Serious nations, all nations that can listen to the mandate of nature, have prized song and music as a vehicle for worship, for prophecy, and for whatsoever in them was divine. That is by Carlyle. Unselfishness. There is nothing like putting the shine on another's face. To put the shine on our own. Nine-tenths of all loneliness, sensitive, sensitiveness, despondency, moroseness are connected with personal interests. Turn more of these selfish interests into unselfish ones, and by so much we change opportunities for dishearten, disheartenment into their opposite, as by W.C. Uh, Gannett. Next we have neighbor. Love your neighbor for God's sake, and God for your own sake. Who created all things for your sake and redeemed you for his mercy's sake. If you love, oh wait, if your love hath any other motive, 
it is false love. If your motive hath any other end, it is self-love. If you neglect your love to your neighbor, in vain you profess your love of God. For by your love of God, your love of your neighbor is acquired, and by your love to your neighbor, your love of God is nourished. That is by the beauties of thought. Next we have, Who Walks the World with Soul Awake? Who walks the world with soul awake finds beauty everywhere. Though labor he his portion, though sorrow be his share. He looks beneath obscuring clouds, sure, uh, sure that the light is there, and if the ills of mortal life grown heavier to bear, doubt come with its perplexities and whisper of despair. He turns with love to suffering men, and lo, God too is there. That is by Flor Florence Earl Coates. And it's really hard to read that writing. I'm kind of glad they only have one of those per chapter. It's really small print and it's italicized. Influence. The least may influence the greatest. It was St. Andrew that influenced St. Peter to come and see Jesus. One least spoken of among the apostles influenced the one who took the foremost place among them, as if to show that such power is independent of personal superiority. It is not the great and gifted uh, alone who exercise this mysterious power of influence. It is a universal law of life. These personal influences, first of Jesus on Andrew, and then of Andrew on Peter, were the beginning of the conversion of the world. That is by T. T. Carter. Now we have helpfulness. Did you know Dr. Osler? Someone asked an, ask another. Yes, was the answer. Intimately, but I only saw him once. It was late twilight. The city square was almost deserted when a woman carrying a heavy child came slowly up the square and sat down to rest on the coping, bo on the coping bordering the pavement. The child's heavy head was pressed against her bosom, and she seemed, and she seemed all in. I started to speak to her when up the square came jauntily a man in full evening dress, top coat, silk hat, flower in his buttonhole, light glove, light gloves in one hand, and his can and his can swinging in the other, evidently singing. In an instant, he saw the woman and her burden. He stopped, made a playful dive with his cane at the child, then, throwing cane and gloves on the grass, he gently lifted the child into his arms, holding its head against his own breast as he talked to the mother. Then, whistling to a little boy, to a little boy who chanced in sight, he said, Get a cab as quick as you can, and if you are back in five minutes, riches for you. And he patted his breast pocket. The boy flew off and was back quickly with the cab. Dr. Osler put the woman in the cab, carefully placed the child on her lap. Then he wrote on a card, This is Mrs. Osler's youngest. See that, that he is well taken care of until I come tomorrow night. He read what he had written aloud to the woman, wink, winked his eye at me, gave the driver his fare, told him to drive at once to the Hopkins Hospital. See that the woman and the boy were safely attended to. Then pressed a $5 bill in the woman's hand, said, Your laddie will be well looked after at the hospital. I will see him tomorrow. Then he slammed the door of the cab and was off. All done while I was trying to say, Can I help you? That is by Edith G. Reed. Obedience. The man who would lift others must be uplifted himself. And he who would command others must learn to obey. That is by Charles K. Ober. Marching together. In the Roman army of old, the soldier carried a large oblong shield on his left arm. While a city was besieged, the men in close rank locked their shields together over their heads and then marched in safely to the gate. So it is in an organization where brotherhood prevails. We lock our shields over our heads as we march against the vicissitudes, the trials, and temptations of life, 
and not over our own heads alone, but others are sheltered beneath them. A comrade falls, but our locked shields ward off hardship and penury from his window and his little ones. A, a companion is prostrated with sickness, but he is carried for for and <coughs> pardon me, well <coughs> sorry about that, well how do you drink my saliva went down the wrong pipe anyways, um okay, let's go back a little way, sorry about that a comrade falls, but our lock shields ward off hardship and penury from his from his widow and her little ones. A companion is prostrated with sickness, but he is cared for, and the wants of both him and his and, and his are supplied. Now, self-poison. Bad temper in its own scourge. Oh, no, bad temper is its own scourge. Few things are bitterer than to feel bitter. A man's venom poisons himself more than his victim. That is by Charles Buxton. A soldier of the common good a life without love in it is like a heap of ashes upon a deserted hearth. With the fire dead, the, the laughter stifled, the, the stilled, and the light extinguished, it is like a winter landscape, with the sun hidden, the flowers frozen, and the wind whispering through the withered leaves. God knows we need all the unselfish love that, we, that can come to us. For love is seldom unselfish. There is usually the motive and the price. Do you remember William Morris and how his life was lived? Was lived? His fortune spent, his banks busied in the service of others. He was the father of the settlement movement of cooperative homes for working people and of the arts and crafts revival in our day. He was a soldier of the common good. After he was gone, his life began to grow in radiance and power. Like a beacon set high upon a dangerous shore, in the twilight of his days, he wrote what I think, well, what I like to think was his creed and mine. I'm going your way, so let us go hand in hand. You help me and I'll help you. We shall not be here very long, for soon death the kind old nurse, will come back and rock us all to sleep. Let us help one another while we may. That is by Frank P. Uh, Tebbets. And I think they got part of the Pokemon theme from that. Folly. Consider how few things are worthy of anger, and thou wilt wonder that any fool should be wroth. That is by uh, Robert Dods Dodsley. Kingdom. The kingdom of God is is a society of the best men working for the best ends according to the best methods its law is one word loyalty its gospel one message love if you know anything better live for it if not in the name of god and of humanity carry out christ's plan that's by henry drummond next we have traveling homeward to be strong and true to be generous in praise and appreciation of others to impute worthy motives even to enemies to give without ex expectation of return to practice humility tolerance and self-restraint to make the best use of time and opportunity to keep the mind pure and the and the judgment charitable to extend intelligence sympathy Oh, intelligent sympathy to those in distress, to cultivate quietness and non-resistance, to seek truth and righteousness, to work love, pray, and serve daily, to aspire greatly, labor cheerfully, and take God at his word. This is to travel heavenward. That is by um, Grenville Kleiser. Next we have one called Souls. My soul goes clad in gorgeous things, scarlet and gold and blue. And at her shoulder, sudden wings, like long flames, flicker through. Uh, and she is wallow, fleet, and free from mortal bonds and bars. She laughs because eternity blossoms for her with stars. O oh, folk who scorn may, may stiff gray groan, my dull and foolish face. Can you not see my soul flash down, a, singing, a singeing flame through space? And folk whose earth-stained look I hate, why may I not divine 
your souls that may be passionate, shining and swift as mine. That is by um, Fanny Steams Davis. Next we have Breaking Barriers. This then is Christianity to smash the barriers and get next to your fellow man. That is by John T. Ferris. Next we have The Most Powerful Motive. The sense of somebody's need is, I believe, the most powerful motive in the world, one that appeals to the largest number of people of every age, race, and kind. It wakes up the whole nature, the power that learn as well as those that perform. It generates the vigor of interest that submerges uh, selfishness and cowardice. It rouses the in, uh inventiveness and ingenuity that slumber so soundly in students' classrooms. For many of us, work that is service taps a great reservoir of power, sets free some of our age some of our caged and leashed energy. That is by Richard C. Cabot. Next we have keep them to yourself. What right have I to make everyone in the house miserable because I am miserable? Troubles may come to all, but trouble need not be wicked, and it is wicked to be a destroyer of happiness. That is by Amelia E. Barr. Now we have second cha uh, oh second changes. That is a G. Okay, changes. We all have to learn, in one way or another, that neither men nor boys get second changes. No, second. Maybe that is supposed to be a C. Okay get second ch chances in this world we all get new chances uh, we all get new chances till the end of our life it does say chances but not second chances in the same set of circumstances and the great difference between one person and another is how to take a hold of and use his first chance and how he takes his fall if if it is scored against him that is by Thomas Hughes. Next we have church. A reading church is an informed church. An informed church is an interested church. An interested church is an acting church. An acting church is a serving church. A serving church is a Christian church. And that, it just says it's from selected. Next we have sins of society. Someone has said that the seven deadly sins of society are these. Policies without principles. Wealth without work. Pleasure without conscience, uh, conscience, knowledge without character, commerce and industry without morality, science without humanity, worship without sacrifice. That is by Observer. Next we have, when a man comes to himself. Surely a man has come to himself, oh, to himself only when he has found the best that is in him and has satisfied his heart with the highest achievement he is fit for. It is only then that he knows of what he is capable and what his heart demands and assuredly no thoughtful man has ever came to the end of his life and had time and a little space of calm from which to look back upon it who did not know and acknowledge that it was what he had done unselfishly and for others and nothing else that satisfied him in that in the retrospect and made him feel that he had played the man. And so men grow by having responsibility laid upon them, the burden of other of other people's business. Their powers are put out at interest, and they get usury in kind. They are like men multiplied, each count manifold. Men who live with an eye only upon what is their own are dwarfed besides them, seen fractions Oh, seem fractions while they are int integers. The trustworthiness of men trusted seems often to grow with the trust. That is by Woodrow Wilson. Next, we have sacrifice. There can be no real and abiding happiness without sacrifice. Our greatest joy, our greatest joys rather, do not result from our efforts towards self gratification, but from a loving and spontaneous service to other to other lives. Joy comes not to him who seeks it for himself, but to him who seeks it for other people. That is by H.W. Sylvester. 
turning, oh no, tuning up. Every morning, compose your soul for a tranquil day and all through it, be careful often to recall your resolution and bring yourself back to it. So to say, if something uh, dis discomposes you, do not be upset or troubled, but having discovered the fact, humble yourself greatly, no, humble yourself gently before God and try to bring your mind into a quiet attitude. Say to yourself, well, I have made a false step. Now I must go more carefully and watchfully. Do this each time, however frequently you fall. When you are at peace, use it profitably, making constant acts of meekness and seeking to be calm even in the most trifling, the most trifling things. Above all, do not be discouraged. Be patient. Wait. Strive to attain a calm, gentle spirit. That is by Saint Fr Fr uh, sorry Saint Francois de Sales. Goodness. You can you can only make others better by being good yourself. That is by Hugh R. Hollies or Hollies. Okay. Next we have Ich Dien. I think that that's German, and I'd probably mispronounce that. I'm sorry. I don't know any German, though I'm probably descended from Germans. I'm not sure. The crest of the Prince of Wales bears the simple watchword, I serve, and no more, and no more princely motto can be found. We cannot determine whether our faces shall be beautiful or ugly, our bodies graceful or deformed, but the shaping of our lives is in our own hands. We make that great or small, noble or mean, as we will. The motto, I serve, always betokens real power and lasting authority. More, it is a truly Christian motto and proclaims eternal kinship with the highest. That is by George Henry Hubbard. Next we have cooperation. Never one, never one thing and seldom one person can make for a success. It takes a number of them merging into one perfect whole. That is by Marie Dressler. Next we have dependence. We can't play alone in the game of life. We're dependent, my friend, on others. We cannot, quote unquote, get by in the struggle and, and strife except for the help of our brothers. Whatever we plan or whatever we do, wherever we get, oh, whatever we give of our best is meant to include all our fellow men too and add to the joy of the rest. Next we have reward. Service to a just cause rewards the worker with some real happiness and satisfaction than any other venture in life, or adventure of life. Uh, that is by Carrie Chapman Cat. Next we have, for those who love me. I live for those who love me, for those who know me true, for the heaven that smiles above me and awaits my coming too, for the cause that lacks assistance, for the wrong that needs a resistance for the future in the distance and the good that I can do. That is by G. Linnaeus Banks. Next we have Burning Bridges. He who cannot forgive others breaks the bridge over which he may pass himself. No, he must pass himself. Okay. That is by George Herbert. Next we have Robbing Oneself. Of all the passionate... Oh, no, sorry. Of all the passions that we incident to a man... There is none so impetuous or that produces so terrible effect as anger. For besides that intrinsical mischief which is which it works in a man's own heart in regards whereof Hugo s said well, pride robs me of God, envy of my neighbor, anger of myself. What bloody um, tragedies doth this passion act every day in the world, making the whole earth nothing but either an amphitheater for fight or shambles for, for slaughter. That is by Joseph Hall. Next we have teamwork. We may call it by this name or call it by that. Teamwork or cooperation. Together we stand by ourselves. We fall. Flat, oh, we fall flat. Together, my friend, we are, we're the nation. Whatever we do or whatever we plan, we can't stand alone, even the best of us. 
but must share of our gifts with our good fellowmen. For we're only a part of the rest of it. Uh, only a part of the rest of us. Next, we have fellowship. We are told that William Penn, clad in simple garb, stood in the center of a company of Indian chieftains. I believe they mean Native American. And said, My friends, we have met on the, the broad pathway of good faith. We are all one flesh and blood. Being brethren, at no advantage shall be taken on either side. Between us there shall be nothing but openness and love. Jumping to their feet, these Indian chiefs replied, While the rivers run and the sun shines, we shall live in peace with the children of William Penn. Although no record of this of this treaty was made on parchment, yet the war whoops of the Native Americans was not heard again in Pennsylvania for more than 70 years. That is from Selected. Next we have gifts. He gives nothing he gives nothing but worthless gold who gives from a sense of duty but he who gives but a slender a slender mite and gives it that which is out of sight that thread of the all sustaining beauty which runs through all the cloth oh and oh wait sorry which runs through all and doth all unite the hand cannot grasp the whole of his alms the heart outstretched its eager palms for for a for a god goes with it and makes it makes it store the soul that was starving in darkness before. That is by James Russell Lowe. Next we have purge. Out of every heart the lurking grudge. Give us the grace and strength to forbear and to per persevere. Offenders give us the the grace to accept and to forgive offenders. Forgetful ourselves. Help us to bear cheerfully the forgetfulness of others. Give us courage and gaiety and the quiet mind. Spare, spare to us our friends. Soften to us our enemies. Bless us if it may, if it may be, in all our innocence endeavor. If it may not give us the strength to encounter that which is to come, that we be brave in peril, con, uh, constant in tribulation, temperate in wrath, and in all changes of fortune, and down to the gate of death, loyal and loving one to another. That is by Robert Louis Stevenson. Next we have a test. A cobbler at Leyden, who used to attend the public dis disputations held at the academy, was once asked if he understood Latin. No, replied the merchant, but I know who is in the, uh, who is in the wrong in the argument by seeing who is angry first. That's very clever. Together these seven uh wait, together these seven togethers are seven links of a chain which bind us indissolubly to Christ. Crucified together, quickened together, raised together, see together in heavenly places, sufferers together heirs together, and glorified together with Christ. They indicate the everlasting purpose of God in our redemption, and his plan in affecting that purpose. Next we have courtesy. It is not the creation of effort. It is the production of grace. It is born, not made. Paul was born of grace, and therefore he was gracious, and instinctively his courtesy fitted itself to all the changing requirements of the day. Grace is the bountiful mother of all the graces. That is by J. H. Jowett. Next we have self-preservation. The use of anger is to stir us up to self-preservation and to put us upon our guard against in injuries. When it has done this, it has performed all that belongs to it. For what measures we may take to affect this? How we may secure ourselves and how we should behave toward those who offend us. These are the points concerning which we must not consult our passions, but our reason, which was given us to moderate our passions and to prescribe laws for our actions. That is by Jorton. Next we have temper. 
if religion has done nothing for your temper, it has done nothing for your soul. That is by Clayton. Next we have vain regret. My mind was ruffled with small cares today, and I said pettish words and did not keep long-suffering patience well, and now how deep my trouble is for sin, in vain I weep. For foolish words I never can unsay. That is by H. S. Sutton. Next we have taste. If I had my life to live over again, I would have made a rule to read some poetry and listen to some music at least once a week, for perhaps the parts of my brain now atrophied would thus have been kept active through use. The loss of these tastes is a loss of happiness and may possibly be injurious to the intellect, and more probably to the moral character by enfeebling the emotional part of our nature. That is by Darwin, actually. Next we have, it takes two. Labor and trouble one can always get through alone, but it takes two to be glad. That is by Ibsen. Next we have unconscious growth. Art creates an atmosphere in which the proprieties and amenities of the virtues unconsciously grow. That is by Robert G. Ingersoll. Next we have calmness. We often forget this most of we, we often forget this, most of us, but it is true. Noise, anger, explosive tones, superlatives, exaggerations of passion add nothing to the force of what we say, but rather rob our words of the power that belongs to them. But the utterance that shows a spirit subdued by truth and mastered by wisdom is the utterance that sweeps away opposition, that persuades the, that persuades and overcomes. Go into a heated political con convention, and you will find that it is not the men who get angry and storm and swear who carry the day, but the men who never lose their tempers and never raise their voices, who keep talking quietly and placidly as if they were discussing the weather. This is a truth that all of us who seek influence Oh, seek to influence our fellow beings in, in the family, in the church, in the school, in society, in politics, anywhere. We lay to we lay to heart. We are prone to forget it, but we make a great mistake when we forget it. The soft tongue breaketh the bone. The tanned tongue subdues the adver the adversary. That is by Gladden. Next we have dissatisfaction. With our condition, it is oh, oh dissatisfaction. Oh, sorry, dissatisfaction with our condition is often due to the false idea we have of the happiness of others. That is by Churchman. Next, we have this is the final test of a gentleman: his respect for those who can be of no possible service to him. That is by William Lyon Phelps. Next, we have many hands. By many hands, the work of God is done. That is by Richard. La Galine. And next we have Christmas Spirit. I am the Christmas Spirit. I enter the home of poverty, causing pale, uh, pale-faced children to open their eyes wide in pleased wonder. I cause the miser's clutched hand to relax and thus paint a bright spot on his soul. I cause the aged to renew their youth and to laugh in the old glad way. I keep romance alive in the heart of, chil of childhood and brighten sleep with dreams woven of magic. I cause eager feet to climb dark stairways with filled baskets leaving behind hearts amazed at the goodness of the world. I cause the prodigal to pause a moment on his wild, wasteful way and send to anxious love, some little token that releases glad tears, tears which watch, watch, which wash away the hard lines of sorrow. I enter dark prison cells, reminding scarred manhood of what might have been, and pointing forward to good days yet to be. I come softly into the still white house of pain and lips that are too weak to speak, just tremble in silent, eloquent um, eloquent gratitude. In a thousand ways I cause the weary world to look up into the face of God and for a little moment forget the things that are small and wretched. I am the Christmas Spirit by E.C. Baird. 
Next, we have arrangement. A child's uh, uh, arrangement. A child desirous of presenting his father with a bo bouquet goes into the garden and gathers a lap full of flowers and weeds all mixed together. His mother selects, arranges, and binds the flowers and makes the gift acceptable. So Christ makes even our poor services ex acceptable to God as a sweet-smelling sa savor. That is by Ambrose. Next we have music. In nature's high water mark, it is the it is when the brook is full and goes with strong pulsing current towards the sea that it sings sweet music. When the writer of the book of Job would give us the noblest idea of beauty and harmony in the universe, he declares that the creation's dawn, the quote unquote, the morning stars sang together, when God would give the most glorious prelude to the birth of Jesus, angels sang together on the plains of Bethlehem. That is by Gordon. Um, who is brother? He who understands your silence. He who will be the balance in the seesaw of life. He who considers your needs before your deservings. He who to himself is true and therefore must be so to you. He who, when he reaches the top of the ladder, does not forget you forget you if you are at the bottom. He who is the same today when prosperity smiles upon you and tomorrow when adversity and sorrows come. He who cheerfully comes in when all the world has gone out, who weeps with you when the laughing is away. He who guards your interest as his own, neither flatters nor deceives, gives you praise to your good deeds and equally condemns your bad acts. He who is the same to you in the society of the wealthy and proud as in the solitude of poverty, whose cheerful smile sheds sunlight in every company, as by Lodge Record. Next we have having and getting. There is no happiness in having and getting, but only in giving. Half the world is on the wrong, the wrong scent in the pursuit of happiness, that is by F.W. Gonzalez. Next we have the final page here. Courtesy. Some friends of mine um, motoring in winter over the Spanish um, Guardamas struck, uh, stuck in a deep snowdrift and asked a passing mule, a mule tier if he would be kind enough to drag their car to the top of the pass. He agreed and at the top they offered him a tip which must have seemed to him a small fortune, but he waved it aside with an apologetic smile, as if unwilling to hurt their feelings, saying, All that this poor can offer is favors. That is by um, Howard of Penrith. Next we have Outwitted. He drew, he drew a circle and shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle and took him in. That is by Edwin Markham. Reprinted by permission. Next we have Love is the medicine of all moral evil. By it the world is to be cured of sin. Love is the wine of existence. When you have taken that, you have taken the most precious drop that there is in the cluster. Love is the seraph. And faith and hope are but the wings by which it flies. The nature of the highest love is to be exquisitely sensitive to the act of forcing itself un unbidden and unwelcomed upon another. The final, no, the finer and stronger the higher love is, the more it is conditioned upon reciprocation. No man can afford to invest his being in anything lower than faith, hope, and love. These three, the greatest of which is love. That is by Howard Ward Beecher. Next I ha we have, I will not follow where the path may lead, but I will go where there is no path and will leave a trail. That is by Muriel, uh, Mur uh, Muriel Strode. Next we have Rich. Men have built their, our hospitals, endowed our colleges, founded um, our orphan 
Holmes assisted the scientists in combating disease, and they have, in a thousand ways, blessed the old world. Let us be fair. We have no right to pick out a few who have worshipped the dollar and lived for self at the expense of human life, and judge all by them. The world is full of good men and women who have accumulated wealth and who are blessing the world in which they live, every man and woman, to their task. Ability, labor, and capital must each make its contribution to civilization and prosperity. Prosperity is a granary that can be filled to overflowing only when all workers unite in bringing in their contribu contributions, large and small. This is by the Public Speaker's Library. Backward. By putting his best foot forward, many men pulls the worst foot back. That is by Ralph W. Um, Sockman. I don't know why my phone went out. Um, sorry about that. Oh, it's been 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, next we have Hold Out a Light. Hold out a light. The way is dark. No ray to guide yon struggling bark. Rough rocks are near and wild waves roar. Hold out a light to show the shore. Hold out a light your brother may win back to land with your small ray. New courage find life storms to face with strengthened faith to win the race. That is by Addison Howard Gibson. And we are done with this part. We will continue this chapter um, in the next part. Anyways, we have been reading from Leaves of Gold. It is edited by Clyde Francis Lytell. And we've been specifically reading a chapter on others that we will finish in the next chapter the next video if you like this content make sure you like and subscribe ring the bell so you know i upload also if you want to support me in any way if you want to join the discord server all the information will be in the description below and as always you are loved thanks for watching everyone and have a great day